My name is Shauna McQuarrie, and I am a junior music education major at Westminster Choir College. My primary aims as a music educator include instilling a lifelong passion for music listening, making, and performing, helping students become culturally aware through music, and nurturing students into autonomous learners. Through music, students should listen, perform, create, and understand the world around them. Students should learn to sing, dance, play instruments, and compose by means of a combination of methodologies. The methodology should create a curriculum based on classical music, popular music, and multicultural music. I am influenced by the philosophies of Vygotsky's social constructivism, Ladson Billing's culturally responsive teaching, and the philosophical movement of humanism. I learned unknowingly about social constructivism from my calculus teacher in high school. Rather than just lecturing us for 90 minutes, he would challenge us to use our textbooks, our laptops, and each other to solve problems he wrote on the board. Our desks were arranged in groups where we worked together to understand the concepts behind calculus. Through social interaction, we constructed our own knowledge. At college, I've learned about applying social constructivism to the music setting. One way to integrate social constructivism is through informal music making. In one of my classes, we discuss putting students in the deep end of informal music making. In this stage, students are encouraged to use each other to figure out how to play an instrument, arrange a song, or compose a song. Students can use the internet, videos, or more experienced students to reach their goal. Through collaboration, musical goals are achieved through helping each other rather than the teacher just giving them the information. Culturally relevant teaching is a philosophy developed by Ladson Billings. In her book, The Dream Keepers, Ladson Billings talks about the importance of acknowledging race in the classroom. Teachers who ignore the race of students will usually wind up ignoring the wonderful things that make the students unique. It's less about teaching every student equally and more teaching each student fairly based on their abilities. Rather than one-size-fits-all teaching method, teachers should implement a practice of using a student's individual strength to improve their individual weaknesses. This year, I had the wonderful opportunity to listen to a lecture by a retired educator named Nina Scott. Miss Scott was a music teacher in both the urban and suburban setting. She experienced what it was like to have everything she needed for her music classroom, and what it was like to have nothing. In the more urban setting, she stressed the importance of students understanding where they come from. She would often send her choir to Ghana to learn about their culture, as well as perform. She would program a variety of music that would play up the strengths of her choir and stretch their abilities. Miss Scott helped me to understand culturally relevant teaching with her wise words. All students have needs. It's up to the teacher to find them. She affirmed that no matter what school system she was at, the students had room to grow, but where that growth needed to occur was different for each student. Understanding a student's background is also a key point in humanistic teaching. Carl Rogers, a well-known humanistic psychologist, believes that for a person to grow, a person needs an environment that provides them with genuineness, acceptance, and empathy. Each person reacts and responds differently based on perception and experience. His belief is that what the student does is more important than what the teacher does. The focus is on the student. Therefore, the background and experiences of the learner are essential to how and what is learned. Each student will process what he or she learns differently, depending on what he or she brings to the classroom. Again, music education should be a combination of methodologies that will best fit the needs of the students, and not the comfort level of the teacher. In music education, teachers should help scaffold knowledge for the students. The goal is to move the students through the zone of proximal development to help them achieve a higher understanding of music. Students do not start from nothing. They all come in with pre-existing knowledge. It is up to the music educator to discover how the student labels the information and work on deepening the student's understanding. Individualizing education means varying methodologies. Wigelski claims that the prescribed and exclusive following of one and only one method will in turn be harmful to the students. Just because one method works with one class does not mean it will work for another. In my practicum experience with Lamel Jenkins, I got to watch two very different 7th grade classes operate. 
for the A day class, the students were very skilled at solfege but would have trouble with rhythm and meter. She had to use a lot of Orff and Dalcroze techniques to help them find the beat and the meter and the tempo. The B class however was very skilled in rhythm and had more trouble with part singing and learning melody. Miss Jenkins used audiation techniques as well as Kodai techniques to help them get a better understanding of hearing and singing the parts. If a music teacher only uses one methodology, then the teacher could get stuck in a phase that Ellen Freed describes as too much of a good thing. For the music educator, the curriculum is based on the music that is taught. Much like a balance of methodologies, a balance of repertoire should also be utilized to ensure every student learns what they need to learn. While classical music is an important subject to teach, students may not connect to it right away. A teacher should allow for a student's individual choices in music to be validated. Using popular music that the students actually listen to can be a wonderful way to build connections between their music and classical music. Multicultural music should also be used to foster an understanding of tolerance and respect for other cultures. As long as the music is performed with authentic integrity, I don't see anything wrong with incorporating music from other cultures into the music classroom. It's all about the students' needs and what will help them grow to be lifelong music lovers. Many things go into the making of a successful music classroom, but I often find myself going back to the idea that the music education, education class should be student-centered with students' best interests in mind. Students should be allowed to make music without fear of judgment. It is the job of the music educator to set students up for success and instill a lifelong love of listening, performing, and creating music. I think that I can help nurture these lifelong goals through the music I teach, how I teach that music, and how I can make connections with the students on an individual basis and teach them to be lifelong learners.